you a lot to get involved with. And as I mentioned, Tara's <laughs> here. Hi, Tara. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so good to see you again. We're so happy that you all are here. So yeah, so we're going to be going ahead. Just went ahead and let them know, Tara, what the lineup was going to be today. Okay. Let's it's learn on. Russell Rescue. For those of you who, who don't know, yeah. Russell the Rescue. Meeting. Rescue. So uh, Russell Rescue has been around since 2006 officially, but our founder, Mary Ruth, has been rescuing dogs. So thousands of dogs and help them find forever homes. And in just the last couple of years alone, we have been doing an average of 500 dogs. Homes for 500 dogs. It's amazing. So we are a nonprofit organization that is fully volunteer run. There are no paid staff members and we try to keep our expenses as low as possible so that we can take care of the dogs. So we often take in dogs that are not um, welcomed by other shelters or rescues uh, because maybe they have some health challenges or we've been told they have behavior issues. Uh, we want to help get those things sorted out so that they can find good forever homes. So that is a little bit about us and why we're so excited to be here today because we have fosters that need homes. We have fosters that need just like a staycation with family. Um, and we have some dogs that are ready for adoption. So we would love to just jump right in and get down to business to see these dogs today. And that's for you all come in. If you have questions, make sure to let us know. Go ahead and drop them in the chat. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Also going to let you know there are some plenty of options you can do to help. If you want to volunteer, that option is certainly available. If you want to donate some cash or help us out, that option is there as well. And we'll be wanting to answer some questions. And of course, we want you all to meet all the dogs. We've got some friends. You probably hear them in the background. We've got some noisy us as well they want to make their voice heard and say adopt me bring me into your home so we hope you can do that as well <laughs> that's right and um the first one we want to get started with the last couple of days that we have been doing some promotion about the walker road girls so i want to tell you a little bit about them the walker road girls are a group of four little doggos who had were found abandoned on walker road and that is out in lewis county and it's one of those places where dogs get dumped so we hate places like that i grew up on a road where dogs got dumped and they were usually pregnant so we that's how i got started with uh rescuing so many years ago and so these girls are absolutely adorable they are a lovely copper color they are much smaller than they photograph <laughs> so we want to get them here in person so that you guys can get to meet them so i'm going to step out of the way we're going to bring them over and we're going to talk to their foster mom gretchen who's going to tell us a little bit more about them yeah that sounds good so i'll tell you the walker road like she said in lewis county tennessee where places where well, one of the places where a lot of dogs will get dumped four dogs that we have that are available um they're all 22 pounds they're smaller as tara mentioned than they look and they're super sweet they're crate trained i was able to hang out with one of them shortly before we went live and then they're mostly house trained as well and they're beautiful dogs very well uh, behaved and we're gonna get some of them to come over here to give us a little sense of, of who they are if you can in case you want to add another member to your family four of the dogs are very beautiful yeah come on in okay. We've got three. There's a fourth one hiding in the We've car. We've got three. One of them is hiding in the car. This is Gretchen, and she is here with, uh, which dog this is this? This is Topaz. Topaz. And that's Jade. And this is Jade. And we've got Ruby and Opal as well. So tell me more about, about the dogs. Uh, what what are they like? And They're young. They're playful. Um, they're teething, but we think they're fully grown. Okay. Uh, not going to get a whole lot larger. They're very compassionate and loving, and they love to snuggle and play. Jade is a champion uh, tennis ball chaser. She'll chase and bring it back every time. Okay. Topaz loves to chase, but she doesn't always bring the ball back. She's learning. Okay. Um, they're mostly housebroken and were pretty much crate trained when I got them. So I think they were well, well taken care of. You want to hold Topaz? I'm not yeah, get Jade up here. Here you go. Come here, baby girl. Uh, they're a little bit. And we might try to bribe them with some treats here as well. <laughs> they're a little shy at first, but they warm up to you. Um, very smart. I think there might be a little red healer in them. It's hard to say for sure. Uh, maybe terrier. They're small, um, but really just lovely dogs. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're very well behaved. They're yeah. very calm. No health issues. They've all been spayed. They've all been dewormed. Had their shots. Heartworm negative. They're all good to go. Really healthy and happy and. So they're really kind of ready to go if you're looking for, uh, now, now you've had them together. 
Yeah. Um, so they're together with great. Do you have other dogs? I have four Tina <laughs> Yucha Chihuahuas. I have two standard and two teacups, and they're okay. fine with my Chihuahuas. And I also have a senior Chow mix, and they've been fine with him too. Okay. They really come in and they're just like, hey, we know it's your house and we're here to learn the rules and follow the rules and just be a great addition to the family. And now uh, a lot of folks also want to know if you have kids around, are they good with kids? I don't you know? have kids. I've had a couple kids over um, okay. to visit and they were fine with the kids. Okay. They're a little standoffish at first until they get to check you out and know you. Most dogs are. Yeah. But, um, but they're comfortable and, and once they spend a little time with them, they're fine. And so well behaved. I mean, we're just hanging out. We didn't practice this at all. I promise. Yeah, right? The dogs are just sitting here. They're very calm. <laughs> you know, they're they're. They they're don't great bark companion. much. They bark when someone comes to the yard. I've got a big fence backyard. They love to run around in. Oh great! Um, and they really don't bark a lot. They bark when there's someone that shows up, and then they stop. And um, they're pretty well happy to just hang out in the yard all day. Yeah. I bring them in at night because it's really cold. They go right into the crate and sleep in the crate. Although sometimes I do let them sleep at the foot of the bed because they. <laughs> are so social and yeah. they're really sweet and um yeah so if you had to think about what kind of would be great for them one barking they like to run i'm not there she's the smallest she's not pictured here but she's for um they're just really um they like oh, and they love just really good together so she'd be a great therapy dog or just a dog for an older person she's really more relaxed and not as playful as the other four or three but um but they're all just great good. there's no complaints about anything they <laughs> seem amazing and as we as you all have seen they're very uh, very well tempered and well mannered and they're cute as can be and they're all under a year right uh that's what we think yeah yeah so we've had some inquiries about people uh, about younger pups because people want Yep. puppies but we can tell you that getting them at this age is really ideal to sleep through the night yes. so yes. it's the best of both worlds yes. so yes this is awesome well, anything else we should know about these beauties they're just so wonderful and i really keep saying you know i hope they get adopted soon because i'm getting attached to them that's the hardest part of fostering and saying goodbye to the dog foster but they're really perfect wonderful dogs and i think they do well with that had time and and just wanted a good companion dog yeah yeah, yeah. well thank you so much for bringing these dogs on and we'll be talking a little bit more about what you'll want to do if you want to get lucky and take one of these home <laughs> exactly well i want to talk just a little bit angie if you could bring up that slide with tito and chelsea i'd like to talk about them for just a minute i may be a bit out of order but uh, it is on my mind while we've got some nice calm pups here with us we have got uh, a couple of dogs that are really special needs dogs and they are in foster care right now with one of our champions. Her name is Dana. She may be on the phone with us. I'm um, here, Tara. On the right. And uh, you're on. Pop in and tell me if not, I will proceed. I keep, I keep getting cut in and out, so feel free to go on. Okay, great. Well, uh, well I'll put in a little dog through here. <laughs> so, this, and so she doesn't know how to play. Dana's big staying in a playpen while she is uh, is he special uh, her special care. He's the babysitter. Foster her on April. And, and it would be ideal to have her um, where she can continue to heal. Uh, uh, continue to and then little Tito, oh my gosh, I was here last week when Tito came in. He was uh, brought up to us from Miami. And Tito is literally one of the most scared dogs I've ever seen. And he was just doing everything he could to escape. He was, uh, I showed up at the door and he was looking for an out. He was, uh, he was pooping everywhere. He was 
freaking out going to every corner and he was you know out of fear he was trying to nip at everything he was just terrified and it was really really sad to see that um, obviously you can tell from his little face he's had a rough start to life but we are changing that for him and Dana has been amazing because we could not get him to take a treat Dana got him to eat some cheese so we oh, found out he's a cheese lover maybe he's from Wisconsin yeah. who knows um, but he has also warmed up he's coming over to the side of the playpen um, and he is definitely more interested in what's going on and has calmed down. I didn't bring the picture today um, just for the sake of technology transitions, but um, Dana sent me a picture of him uh, with his nose to her hand and there were no teeth showing. So that is progress in just a week. And Dana has five weeks with him before she also needs a babysitter, uh, just a temporary foster, which is one of the ways that you can help if you're watching and considering fostering, but, fostering, but you're worried about the commitment. That is really a great way uh, to just kind of dip your toe in the water. So if you are uh, uh, up for that, we would love to see your application come in or for you to raise your hand. I think Laura, our foster coordinator is on. Laura can drop a, a note into chat if you are interested, just so that you can make sure you all connect um, in helping out. We have those dates available. There's a date uh, about a week in April and also about a week in May when they're going to need an extra hand. So that is a really important way that folks can help out with fostering but you know it, what's important about fostering we talked about this last time so if you've uh, been on with us before you know that it's so important not just to save a life save a dog but it really is about getting to know those dogs better so that we can find them the right home yeah and Russell Rescue does such a great job of really making sure that the connection is perfect and that because that really happens when we were able to learn a lot about the dog through fostering when you get a dog out of an environment you know that may be kind of chaotic there may be several dogs around and we get to see the dog in the home we get to really get an idea of, of the dog's personality just like people dogs have personalities as well some people like other people some people like kids some yeah. others not so much yeah and so by getting the dog into a home environment maybe a quiet environment we get to learn more about their personalities what they like to do and those little nuggets of information are crucial because when we're able to talk about the dogs and show them in different environments, maybe take a few photos, we learn a lot and then we can help make that connection a forever connection. Yeah, and they're so, um, dogs are sometimes so different than what they are when they're in a kennel environment. Um, it's overstimulating, right? It's noisy, there's a lot going on um, and it can be really rough for them to adjust. So that's one of the reasons we wanna get them into foster homes. I mentioned earlier that we do about 500 uh, adoptions a year and saving saving dogs at about a rate of about 500. Do you know that we have a less than 1% return rate? We only get like two or three dogs back every year. And do you know the reason? It's not that they were a bad dog. It's usually that the resident dog in the home did not uh, do well welcoming a new friend. So yeah. I'm sure you all can uh, understand how that goes. So, you know, that is really a great success rate. And we've had such great support as we've been promoting this event because people have said, oh my gosh, I, res I rescued from Russell Rescue 10 years ago and we're looking to adopt again. Like we just have friends for life with the work that we do. And again, it's all volunteer. Our volunteers are doing every single bit of this uh, aside from our vet care um, and those kinds of specialty items. Which is a lot. Which is you know, a lot. Weekly vet bill around three thousand dollars if you can imagine that's a lot of money yeah so there's other ways i mean you can help if you have any extra money to give to russell rescue will certainly certainly go to good use yeah i'll tell you one of the commitments i made after adopting my mom has adopted from russell rescue um, i have adopted from russell rescue and i have helped facilitate adoptions yes with russell rescue <laughs> i adopted my sweet valley from russell rescue yeah, and I have made the commitment that I would at least donate the cost of adoption every year because I can't get a dog every year. That would be a little crazy <laughs> in my condo. So, um, yeah, I've just made that commitment as a way to help continue to support the organization. And now I found more time in my schedule to be able to actually volunteer more of my time, which has been really exciting. It has really like reinvigorated uh, my spirit to be able to do this. So, yeah, so we do these events as well yeah. uh, to help get the word out and let people know about about adoption, answering questions and and fostering. And, and it's it's wonderful. It's been great. Yeah. So should we see some more dogs? I see little what? Bella's coming. Oh my gosh, this little nugget. I just love her. And this she is, uh, she's dressed for the weather. She's she got her is. 
I said last week, she's like an itty bitty thing. She literally doesn't weigh, a, I mean, she's not as big as a minute. She's, she's whimpering at us, like uh, squeaking. <laughs> she is so tiny Yeah. and she is so calm and chill. Even with the other dogs are barking, she was looking around like, what is your problem? She would be so great for some of the folks who've been asking us to connect them with a dog or their parents, you know, they want a companion. They want somebody to really sit with them and be a cuddle bug. And Bella would be awesome for that. So she is available. She would love to get out of boarding and get into a foster home. So if you can't adopt right now or you're just considering it, we would love to get her in a foster home so that she could just relax and watch like soap operas and, you know, eat popcorn in the evenings. Sounds like a stuff. good plan. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> or if you know somebody, you know, a lot of times, you know, you may, you may not be able or ready, but if you know somebody who would run like a great lap dog and would love some companionship, uh, they can get get lucky this month. Yes, and indeed. end up with that little girl. That's right. They sure can. Well, let's go and transition a bit and see what fosters we have on the line who have dogs that they want to show off yes. and give a little break from us talking while we make a little a few switcheroos around here. Angie and team, if you can see who has some fosters on the line, we can spotlight those guys and hear a little bit about the dogs they have in their homes that are available for adoption. Hey, do we have do we have any any fosters? Yeah, this is Manya and I have um I have Faith here. And Faith has been with us for about 6 weeks. She still takes a little bit of time to warm up, but she's a real sweetheart. Uh, she's learned how to walk on a leash and she's lost a few pounds and she's completely house trained. She does great with our dogs and uh, she's a very low energy girl. So it would be great for, um, you know, someone who doesn't want a dog that's overly active and uh, likes to watch movies and be a couch potato. <laughs> okay. And her name again, Manya? This is Faith. Faith. Faith, okay. uh-huh, yeah. All right. <laughs> sweet girl <laughs> all right any other fosters hi this is max can anybody see max i'm gonna make sure that everybody can uh -huh. see max yeah here he is he's great he is uh about seven years old he weighs 10 pounds he is calm most of the time he does love to run he loves to play loves to play catch me if you can uh, and he's um, he's friendly with other people. We've had another couple in our home with my husband and me. He's been friendly to our dog, who's a calm dog. And he's mostly a napper, a great little companion. He has he had one accident in the house the within the first forty eight hours, and not since he's been with us three weeks. He is a licker. <laughs> Can you tell? And um, He's, he's not a picky eater. He's, uh, he's just a little pleasant little guy. And what else can I tell you? Um, I don't think he's walked on a leash before he came to visit with us. He's uh, been okay on a leash, but he kind of lags behind and drifts from left to right. So we'll work with him on that a little bit, but he's, uh, he's great. He's, we've kept him on a, a pee and poop schedule every few hours and had no problems. And he's gone in his crate every night, very pleasantly. He knows now, go to, go to, go to your little room, go to your room. And he gets a greenie at bedtime and that's helping. He does just a little bit of tartar on his teeth, but it's not bad. And um, he's healthy, he's fully vetted. He's ready to go to a, a home and be a, a companion. And um, I think as long as, uh, the other dog accepts him. He'll be. He's been very, um, very friendly. Any questions? You can put them in the chat if you want. Next. Hi. Okay. Have any more that are uh, that are on there? Any any more fosters with dogs available that would like to? This is Meredith, I, and I have Gypsy. 
say hi, Gypsy. So Gypsy is about five or six years old. Um, she was found as a stray somewhere in Lewis County. And she's pretty much completely blind, but yet she loves her walks every day. She likes cow hooves and shoeies. She gets along, hello, get on out. She gets along great with everybody um, and she's completely housebroken. She does like walks to go potty. If you had a fenced in yard that had another dog, she would probably learn pretty quickly to potty outside then, but she prefers walks. Um, she could go hiking with somebody. She absolutely is not impaired by being blind. Um, she walks on the end of a 20 foot leash and as long as I'm making sure she's not gonna get hurt, she's fine. Why are you so wild all of a sudden? So anyway, she's wonderful. She's good with other dogs. Since she's blind, she can't go after cats. She doesn't bark and she's a good eater. And she'd be fine with kids too because she can't, like she wouldn't see them moving quickly or anything weird that quite often is what scares smaller dogs about kids. So that's Gypsy. Okay. Anyone hey, interested, put please put it in our chat. There she is. Love Gypsy. I love that name too. Well, if it's okay, we're gonna come back around to us and show you a couple of dogs that have been dying to meet you. Garen uh, is sitting here with Mary Ruth. Mary Ruth is the founder of Russell Rescue. Everybody knows Mary Ruth. They don't often get to see you though. They just know you by name and voice. We have two little uh, miniature Aussies here, a boy and a girl. They're a bonded pair. They really need to go together. That's what that means. And uh, they are just precious and kind of like the Walker Road girls. We haven't had any um, inquiries about them and we just don't know why because they're so stinking cute. So we have the boy back here. This is blue. And then go ahead. This is, this is Lady. Hey, hey. Lady oh my God. absolutely <laughs> thinks blue is the most wonderful thing in the whole world. She Those eyes not. will do it though. I know. Oh, I wonder where he got his name. I uh, know. I know. He's a lover. And I'll bring him up closer to the camera so you all can see his eyes. They are literally like glacier blue. They are beautiful. And they are little bitty nuggets. And if you might see, uh, depending on your angle, <laughs> that he has something that is called cherry eye. Mm -hmm. And this is something that can be corrected. And it's something that we correct as they go to their forever home. But we like to wait and do that until they're going in for dental and maybe some other procedures so that they don't have to be put under with anesthesia more than necessary. Um, and so I think, you know, sometimes that deters people when they see something that's maybe a little bit curious to them and they think, what is that? And is it gonna be a problem long term? And that's why we like to help dogs like this because we know uh, that they can have a little cosmetic surgery and uh, be looking just as good as new. So I'm gonna scoot around and bring him up closer so you can see his precious little eyes. And they have been so great to today. They've been so so quiet, so loving and just, she obviously oh, she's oh. keeping her eye. Look at those. Oh. Eyes see those wonderful blue hi, eyes hi, hi, that, hi, they oh, just get you right in the mouth right in the mouth <laughs> so he likes <Hello>. kisses <laughs> he is such a good fella <laughs> we just hi. love for them to be together we're not we do not want to separate them and i'll look at her she says where's my boyfriend yes. Yes. look back up yes. here he's look, up here look, 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 it. look, it's okay it's okay, there there it's okay. <laughs> So it would be so awesome also to get these guys in a foster home so that we can find out really more about them. They're so good natured. They've been awesome out here. Uh, we've had them in the playpen behind us as we've been getting everything set up and they've just been fantastic. So if we can learn more <laughs> other than that, they really are affectionate um, or at least that Blue is, it would big be kissers. great. Yeah, they're big kissers. It'd be great to get to know them better so that we can really find them a great forever home. And while we're doing that, I want to go ahead and talk to you all about Russell uh, Rescue's biggest needs always money, fosters, and adopters. So we've got all of these that are represented here. And fosters, thank you so much for what you do. Russell Rescue, of course, would not be able to do what they do without you. 
Uh, so it rests at bringing those pups into your homes, like the two that we just saw. You know, th that's how we get to know more about the animals. Uh, get to kind of showcase them and help put them one step closer to finding that forever home. So if you today and you want to learn more about fostering, stay tuned. We're going to answer some of your frequently asked questions. Keep those coming in the chat. And then feel free to drop your, uh, your questions in the chat as it comes to mind, and then we will go ahead and uh, answer those questions as well. So, any other fosters on uh, on our Zoom that we need to get to? We just want to quick check in. So we're giving you equal air time. As we have a few more feet. All right, we're gonna bring up dot and then after that i think laura uh, our foster coordinator gone we'll talk with her just a little bit about the requirements to foster um and uh talk about that take some of the frequently asked questions that we've had but also give you an opportunity to ask questions as well so micah is going to bring over okay <laughs> micah <laughs> thanks micah's going to bring over dot and she came in with spot <laughs> They are precious little Jeff Russells. They've been so well behaved. Um, and Dot is here in boarding. She would love to get out to a foster home. Um, she has been just a super sweet girl. She is a bit of a shorty. She's not super low. She's not a super low rider, but she does have short little legs. She has a beautiful little uh, disposition. And we have posted pictures of her last week. So you may have seen her during that time. And, um, and she is just an all around gem. They came in together, but they are not bonded and so they can go to different so if you're interested in taking little dot in and seeing what you can find about her as a foster we would absolutely love for you to do that she is just such a chill girl um, with all the activity we had going on she just waited patiently as we were getting ready to come out today so um, we are just pleased as punch that we are able to do this we had such a gorgeous day here um, and able to be able to share these dogs with you so we have a few more that we want to share, but I'm going to take a breath and say, Laura, if you can come on and talk with us a little bit about fostering, that would be fantastic because we've had lots of questions in the last week or so about what it takes to foster and what the requirements are. Hi guys. Um, I just wanted to take a moment and just kind of let you know um, some of the questions that I am asked. I am the brand new foster coordinator with Russell Rescue. So um, if you have any questions for me, if I don't know the answer, I will find them out for you. Um, just a couple things. I know Tara and I have put our heads together a lot in the past couple of weeks to um, really try and increase the recruitment for especially fosters. Um, one of the things uh, that we have come across is distance. People ask how close do you have to be in order to foster? And we like to keep um, foster parents within about a two hour radius at most, um, just due to the distance to veterinary clinics if they were to um, need to go to the vet. Uh, we have absolutely been sharing uh, Russell Rescue posts like crazy. And I know um, that the, uh, our posts have been long reaching. And so please know if we do receive an application for someone outside of the radius, the fostering radius, uh, we will put them in touch with someone that is closer, um, that is, is more local to them. Um, you know, please just let someone know that there are so many, you know, agencies even outside of our area that just need help. Um, so please spread the word, even if it's not fostering with us please, 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 um, fostering is needed everywhere. Um, another thing is um, if uh, for fostering, uh, we do ask that um, the animals in your home be on um, heartworm prevention as well as um, flea and tick prevention. Um, that it's, uh, the animals come fully, you know, vetted or will get vetted before they are adopted. Um, and that is something as a foster that is, um, not an expense to you. That is um, all for Russell Rescue. Um, that is for the, the main questions that I have received so far. Um, please just share our posts, get the word out there that fostering is so needed. Um, even if it's just a temporary foster, um, just giving these little guys a break from boarding, um, just so we can really get to know 
their personalities. And I won't um, belabor what uh, Tara has already said, but it's really hard for these animals to show their personalities um, when they're in boarding or in a kennel. Um, it really just allows us to keep the return rate um, so low is because we are able to find out their true temperaments and what they're like and what they don't so that we can set the set them up for success just as well as the adopter family and so just share 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 any of our posts um, talk to people um, if you have ideas suggestions please reach out to the Russell Rescue page myself Tara Mary Ruth any of us please just reach out um, we love any assistance that uh, anyone has and any ideas are always welcome so if you have any questions for me just let me know Thanks so much, Laura. I will say one of the questions I've gotten is about if you lost her and you're not in uh, either the Columbia area, because our rescue is located here, do you have to bring dogs to Columbia to meet their potential um, adopters? And the answer is no. I live in Nashville and I have fostered. And once um, we find a couple of good matches for the dog, we do interviews, the fosters are involved in the process. And we do not, um, we don't let folks meet dogs until we are really sure that they're going to be a good fit. So it means you're not making a million trips just because somebody wants to meet a dog. We are really uh, respectful of your time and also of the energy it takes, you know, out of the dogs to meet lots of new people in that whole process. So um, we will set all those, help you set all those things up as it makes sense for you. So it's okay if you are somewhere else. And I think Laura mentioned we have such a great network of people too who will help um, if we need to get a dog even to its forever home sometimes they'll drive an hour out of their way and meet an owner an hour you know driving an hour in so that um, someone isn't making a full day trip uh, just to make things like that happen so we love to make sure that we're working with folks to find the right fit to get those dogs in their forever homes um, and to make sure everybody is happy including our foster families so we've got a couple more dogs that we're going to show you but Garen is going to talk just a little bit about where you go if you found your pot of gold you were today. talking about that, that that support network and some of the dogs have actually logged more miles on the road than a lot of people but yeah if you found your pot of gold um, your your love we'll tell you what to do to apply to adopt or to foster you're going to want to go to online to russellrescuetn.com and then you can click on adopt or foster and then fill out the application the application is going to be the same whether you want to adopt or foster and then make sure to put the dog or the dog's names that you're interested in so we can make sure we get the right person with the right animal and then a detailed application is going to help you in process so the more information you can provide the better and they do a really good job as we've been mentioning of making sure that we get the right fit and the right person with the right animal and that's because you know part of that work is really making sure that you're detailed in your application so russell rescue we, we've said it before it's a volunteer organization as well so make sure that you you're a little uh patient uh, be, please be patient with um with you know getting the reply but we've already heard last time we heard that russell rescue even though it's volunteer that our volunteers are on it and then they they get back to you faster than a lot of other places that might yeah that made my heart so happy because i work in volunteer engagement in my day job uh, and i'm so happy to hear what great work they were doing and that they were so responsive uh to folks not just adopters and fosters but to folks who are also partners in the rescue network they I, on the line today. Hey, Dee Dee, and I think Julie might be watching. We just absolutely love that we're able to work with folks all over the country, really, and really the world. We've got a couple dogs across the pond uh, who have made it over there. And um, it is just so important, as you mentioned, with the application that you provide all the information it's asked for and that you be really honest. So Kelly is usually the person who screens our applications, and I have renamed her the Terminator, because Kelly will be on to you if you are trying to falsify your information. <laughs> Kelly is going to be on it, um, but she does such an amazing job, and she is the very main point of entry, which is why we make such great fits with our fosters and with our adopters and make sure they find good homes. So what you're going to be asked for, so you can go ahead and get this ready as you're applying, and you can apply on your phone, which is fantastic. So you don't have to be in a computer to apply. You're going to need to provide three references, and they need to be people who are outside your home. So um, I've always said my mom will give a great recommendation 
for me, but I try not to put her down on things unless it's an emergency contact. <laughs> so you're going to need those references. You're going to need a vet reference. So if you're a person who has not had pets in a while, um, you know, you just need to look around and be very candid with that. Hey, we haven't had pets in our home in the last five or six years. Here's what our situation is. Where you think you'll be taking your uh, dogs into the vet would be very helpful if you were in that scenario. Um, and we are going to be looking for that pet ownership history. So don't feel like we're prying to ask the questions about euthanasia, about um, if you've had to rehome. We just want to know the full picture, right? So we've all had things that happen in our lives. Um, we just want you to be really candid with us so that we can make sure we find the right fit. So go to RussellRescueTN.com and you can find that application and get it submitted so that we can start processing. And the average time is about a week. And that's just because we actually call your references mm -hmm. and we call the vet. So we are going to call those references, but I would recommend that you let them know what's up. If you're looking to adopt, let them know what you're looking at. And if you're looking to foster, obviously tell them what you're doing, what you're interested in and how you're willing to help so that your friend or family member knows uh, what's up before you, uh, or we reach out to them. So we usually try by phone and email. And so if they're being responsive um, to either of those methods of communication, it's gonna speed up that application process. And if you know that you may be able to adopt maybe in a few months, you can go ahead and help the, the adoption process or, or you wanna foster maybe after you retire, yes. or you know there's gonna be a time period, go ahead and fill out the application now, get pre-approved first, yep. because that way we can already have you sort of on the list and we can know you know, as soon as you're ready, give us a call, let us know, yeah. and we'll be able to, to pair you up with the right dogs or help you help other dogs get to the right home. <laughs> That's right. Pre-approved people get pups faster. Say that five <laughs> times fast. We are just, um, just so happy that we have this amazing team of people. I have been delighted to be able to work with them. Mary Ruth is bringing over our last two little buddies that we're going to meet here Abby. on site. Tara. Tara. And Yes. Terry, this is Angie. If you can hear me, the little one, little bitty one that was wrapped up in the blanket. Yes. Um, we've got a war going on. Her name was Bella. Was that correct? Bella. Yes. Uh -oh. yeah. Okay. War over Bella. Yes. <laughs> Bella. So I just want. A little, oh my gosh, she's just so precious. Yes, that is Bella, and Bella is a popular name, so you may want to reference. Oh. <laughs> I think this is another Bella. So we can have a bit more on her. Yes. So this Bella is also a, a precious little sweetheart. And this is, sorry, go ahead. What's this one? <laughs> this is Abby. This is Abby. Abby. She, so they're both were owner surrenders, and Bella's was because this her is owner Cupid. passed away. This is Cupid. Cupid and Bella. <laughs> Bill Abby. Excuse me. Cupid. And there's no other Bella retract that she's statement been, been off. she had where she'd been so nervous she had oh. the lick granules on her oh. legs uh -huh. she had them removed and she didn't do it anymore okay, okay. so uh, both of these were owner surrenders due to sickness and uh, things of that nature it happens right um, and so this is little Cupid his photos were also up on the website earlier this week um, and you have close up his, of his feet he was such a nervous little uh, little guy he was licking his feet a lot and he had some little granules there from all that constant licking but we had those removed and he's doing better and he hasn't been licking anymore so he is a sweetheart he was so precious last week doing his photo op um, and so if you're interested in Cupid we have some great photos of him up on um, our Facebook page I believe also he's on our website and for those of you who wondered why our website is sometimes not reflective of what we're posting on Facebook it's because there's a lag time between when we get them posted and when they show up on Pet Finder yeah. and sometimes that can be as long as two weeks so that's also why it's important when you fill out your application to be very descriptive about what you're looking for because sometimes by the time they hit Pet Finder they may have already been placed because of all of the promotion we're doing on social media and just through our network. So, um, okay, we'll turn it over now and we will talk to Abby and see her cute little teeth. This is Abby. So Abby, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure if y'all can yeah, see this. I'm going to get a little closer. See there you that? go. Yeah, you see the teeth there? They're like reverse, reverse fangs or something. <laughs> but I promise you, she's not, she's not biting. She's very chill, very relaxed and, and super cute. So uh, yeah, if you see these, these teeth. How cute is that? Oh, she's oh. so sweet. Oh, she's she precious. Adorable. Yes. 
So Abby here with the, with the, fang, the, the reverse fangs. Yes. I don't know, we need a better name for that. <laughs> and then little Cupid here. Both of them were also styling and profiling with their little jackets because it is a little breezy here. Um, although it's in the 50s, it's a lovely day. We picked a great day to do this. <laughs> so this is what we've got right now, folks, for fostering. Um, and these folks would love to get out of, these little pups would love to get out of uh, the boarding so that we can make room for others who are coming in. And then all of the dogs that you saw that are in foster foster homes currently are looking for their forever homes these guys as well so yeah. if you want to go straight to adoption that is absolutely possible and we would love to see that happen as well um, and we would just really love uh you know for folks to give us some feedback too about what you're seeing and what you would like to see from us in terms of how we interact with the dogs when we're showing them off to you we've been trying to do a really great job of that to give you as much information as that you can find the right fit. And we are going to continue programming. Look for us in the months ahead with educational programming. We'll continue some Q and A's, maybe have some special guests as well. Um, and I do want to make sure that we uh, show you all um, the, the QR codes That's right. and all the, also the ways to give back. So we could go to that slide. Um, there are some plenty of other things you all can do. Those are the QR codes. Uh, one of them is to PayPal, one of them is to Venmo, and all the money that you give was going to help to help us do what we do, help the volunteers, help get the dogs into to great places, but before, help to, to care for their needs, just like adoptions and, and vet costs are obviously uh, expensive as well. So expensive. So one of the things that we uh, we wanted to share those QR codes with you, feel free uh, to share those with others. We will, uh, we have some of those things up on our Facebook page. We'll make sure this slide gets posted there as well. And then if you, if you can go to the next slide, we have a couple of other ways. If you are shopping in Amazon or at Kroger, uh, those organizations also give back. If you reg register Russell Rescue of Tennessee with them and you're shopping. And then in the next slide, we talk a little bit more about how you can also donate your time and your talents uh, just through volunteering. So if you're not one who can take in a foster at this time, we totally understand. And we would love uh, that engagement that you give us on social. Y'all have been blowing it up the last couple of weeks, especially sharing your uh, pup dates with us through Facebook and Instagram. We're loving it. Every time you share, every time you comment, it, we're getting traffic to our social media pages which is how people find us and learn about the dogs that we have available for adoption. If you can't foster right now, you can't adopt right now, we have other ways that you can help our team. Laura and I have been working hard to come up with other ways that we can get folks involved, um, including people who can maybe do some phone and email work, help us with social media. You can help us with some of the coordination of transportation. These are all things that can be done without even having to leave your house. So we would love your help with that as well. Best advertisement, as you mentioned, word of mouth. Also, share this with your friends, your family. Kind of keep them in the loop if they know other people who may be uh, good to volunteer or maybe looking for a companion. It's always great to have have the more people knowing about uh, what's happening and, and sharing the sharing the wealth. Yeah, in lots of different ways. So we have some big stuff planned for April. Um, Aaron, you know what they say about April showers, right? Oh yeah, that brings May flowers, but we're gonna make it rain. That's right, we are <laughs> gonna make it rain for Russell Rescue. So stay tuned because we're gonna be sharing some really cool stuff with you, some new ways to get involved, some new ways to support the rescue. Um, and we're gonna have a lot of fun while we do it. So we will look forward to seeing you next time. I'm gonna pause and say, do we have any more questions in chat that we need to address before we sign off? Um, we have we have some questions about Bella, I think. Ah, okay. Uh, let me scroll back up here. We have um, so we have a question. How old is Gypsy? Ah, well, everyone has left. I'll put the dogs away. <laughs> so give me just a second. Gypsy, I've, oh, Gypsy. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> We've seen all the dogs today. Yeah, I think Gypsy. I believe was five, I believe. Um, we can certainly get back to you. We have uh, all of their information stored away in our great um, little database where we're able to check all those questions you might have about their health, their age, um, and even sometimes a little bit about their history. Any other questions before we sign off? 
or any other fosters that joined that we maybe didn't get to grab? Okay. I have a, um, I had little Violet here. <gasps> Violet, oh, Violet, bring her on. We were just talking about her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there goes the other dog. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> Um, Violet, I've had her for a couple, maybe a week and a half now. Molly, stop. Uh, she is a, um, as sweet as they come. She is a little scared though, um, of big noises sometimes. And so I think it's just important that Molly, stop girl. They've been quiet this whole time and now they got something to say. Um, <laughs> that she has a really uh, patient and understanding adopter who is really going to be able to read her body cues and stuff. Um, when I got her a week and a half ago, she was just scared about um, everything, but she doesn't mind bossing everyone up. I call her the manager on duty because <laughs> even my big lab, she'll boss up. Um, but she is, she would lay like this all day long if I let her. So she's actually developed quite a bond with my nine-year-old. So I did see a lot of comments in the chat about people wanting to know about um, kids and if the dog is okay with kids. What I can say about this is that the best way, and it doesn't matter if the dog is scared or not, but you have to be so careful when you have any children, despite the age around an animal, because they are animals, right? So I feel like the, um, the, what we do is when you're introducing a kid to, or a dog to a child, what you need to do is just have the kid not look at them, walk by the dog, throw them a piece of cheese every now and then. And then the dog is going to start to recognize, okay, this person's not scary. They're not going to hurt me. And then another thing that um, we do is if the dog is just laying on their dog bed or whatever, just have the child go sit by the dog bed and just read a book or watch the iPad, just not really do anything interactive with the dog and just kind of look over and say some sweet words sometimes to them. That is really going to build that bond. And the dog is going to know very quickly that that child is not going to hurt them and that they're okay. And now little Violet loves him so much. She gets so excited anytime that she sees him. So I think it's important to know that the dog is trying to tell you something. You've just got to read their body language and listen to what they're saying to you. So Rosa, Rosanna, what's the name again? This is Violet. Violet. Okay. AKA my manager on duty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to put that one. Okay. <laughs> I, little Violet had so much interest as we were showing some photos of her, but like you said, she needs a really special home. And I'm so glad we took the time to talk about children because, um, you know, a child with a, uh, that has been around dogs and has respect for the animals um, is very different than a child that, it, that doesn't, that doesn't know um, boundaries and things of that nature. So it's so important to just keep that in mind. And if you need tips or tricks for how to introduce your, uh, your, pets to your children we are always here for stuff like that as well our foster are happy to help we each kind of have our specialty areas and I think that Mary Ruth literally stays on the phone like 23 <laughs> hours a day um, and she is always available to lend her expertise and she is just uh, she has a trick for everything so we want to invite you to ask us questions to ask for help with situations like that so that you can have your home prepared to bring your new furry little one in so Thank you again so much. Anything else that we need to cover before we say goodbye? All right. We want to make sure that you um, remember that Dana needs a hand in May and in April for about a week of special cases with Tito and Chelsea. So if you're interested in that, Laura uh, would love to hear about it in chat and we can help make sure that you all get connected. And uh, we will say ta-ta for now and we will see you next time. Bye, Thank everybody. you all so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye.
All right. That's everyone.